Look, I printed you a house. Now, I realize it's a little bit more complicated than that. One of my most highly requested videos to make was about 3D printed homes. And I have researched extensively over the months on what 3D printed homes truly are and if there's something that's even gonna be possible for us today. When I think about 3D printed homes, I think about the homes that we used to see as kids for the homes of the future. When you step inside the total electric home, you step into an entirely new concept in living, organized around electric centers such as this entertainment center. Just like that old Westinghouse commercial, it seemed like a lot of the things that they came up with as the home of the future wasn't necessarily the case. And that's probably going to be the case of 3D printed homes as well. So today we're gonna to take a closer look and see, are 3D printed homes gonna be the thing that saves the affordable housing crisis? Or is it just another one of those fads that we're gonna be talking about like A-frame housing? <laughs> Remember those? I still see them around every once in a while, but it didn't really solve any affordable housing crisis, did it? The most well-known 3D printing company throughout the United States is Icon out of Austin, Texas. In 2018, Icon was the first company in America to secure building permits for the 3D printed home. The first houses in Austin, Texas was their proof of concept to bring to the team and investors and customers that drove to the future of home building. They used the support of developed robotics, software, and materials as their core technology for partners and home buyers. They say more are to come soon. Some of the projects you might know about is House Zero, the first home in Icon's exploration series. They also have other projects projects that are throughout the United States, including East 17th Street Residences, which is a multi-unit building. They've also created a community called Community First, housing for the homeless, the only neighborhood of its kind in the nation. The village provides permanent housing for people who have experienced chronic homelessness. Icon's 3D printed 500 square foot welcome center and three other printed homes at this time are a series of six. Each home is printed in within 24 hours and features two bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, and a bath. So why is everybody so excited about these cake battered houses? Well, the biggest reason of course is the cost. 3D printed homes, they say will cost a lot less money because of the fact that there isn't any lumber involved. And currently there is a home that is up for sale and has been sold. We're just waiting for it to close. That was constructed with a 3D printing technology and it sold for $300,000 in an area that typically sells for about 600,000. From this particular home that you see from Zillow, the builder's even offering a 50 year warranty on it. Ooh, that sounds all great. All of these are pluses, except for a few things that they don't mention. Even though the cost of these seems relatively low, they've missed out on some of the biggest things that could possibly happen in the cost process itself. If you're looking for that traditional look of walls, it really kind of looks like corduroy going up. They say you can smooth it out afterwards, but that is another process that will add to the expense. And in turn, you're going to basically have a concrete home. Of course, the actual material of building these 3D printed homes is a lot less expensive than hiring people to put in the lumber and the drywall and those kinds of things. But they don't mention the fact how much those machines cost to travel to take it to that specific spot. The machine itself can weigh as much as five tons to get it there. Not only that, you're going to have to hire very specific people that are trained to work with this 3D material. And if you don't have anybody in your area, those are specialists. So you're going to have to have them come to your spot to build your specific type of home. Another thing they never mention about these 3D printed homes is that you have to have it tented. Not all 3D printed home companies do this, but a lot of them do, is they tent the area all the way around where the 3D printed machine is going to be pouring it. And it's all the way up to the ceiling. And that way though, there's no materials that blow onto the concrete because it's just like tubes of toothpaste. And if sand kicks up, then you're gonna be getting it into your walls and nobody wants that weird texture of sand or leaves being stuck to the walls of your home. Another thing that, that no one ever mentions is the fact that these machines have to be extremely balanced when you're putting up the house. At any moment, something could rock the machine and move it off to the side. And if it does get off balance, then the pour itself is going to be off. Just think of it just like you were printing out a piece of paper. If your piece of paper is slightly off, the whole print looks ridiculous. That's what would happen with these 3D printed houses if they were not completely perfectly balanced. Now, some builders say they have offset 
said this problem and it's something they're continually working on and they're going to be addressing in the future. They say as time goes on, of course, they're gonna be getting better and better at making these 3D printed houses. Another cost to the machine itself is that if you're putting it in a neighborhood, are you gonna to have to have specific cranes to carry the machine over like trees or other houses to get it to your lot? That's going to be another expense that you didn't count on. Now the structure of the house may only cost you 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 to have the house poured, but all those other factors are going to cost you a lot more money. In turn, will it actually cost you less to build a 3D printed house or a traditional built house? Only time will tell. Now, the other thing that's been touted about like 3D printed homes is that they're supposedly energy efficient, but they're made of like a solid concrete type material. And concrete is not really necessarily known for its energy efficiency. It actually soaks up heat as much as water is soaked up in a sponge. So what are they doing to these walls to make them energy efficient. I know that there's a space between them. Are they filling it with some kind of cellulose material? What are they doing to bring it up to the R value that meets or exceeds building codes today? That has never been explained. I have seen some German companies that have been filling it up with a foam like material and I've seen other ones that are filling it up with a almost like styrofoam bead type material but they never really express what it is that they are using to bring up the R value so it is energy efficient for these type of homes. There's other issues that could pop up as well throughout the time of owning a home. Let's just say you decide that you want to change out some lighting. All my research that I've done on 3D printing homes, they never mention how you hang up a picture or how you're supposed to mount a TV, a flat screen TV. They love to talk about how cool it is that the walls look a certain way like folded up cake batter, but they never mention how you do this. I know it seems like a small thing, but if it's your home, wouldn't you want to know how you hang up a good plaque like this? I mean, this is an accomplishment. Ta-da! <laughs> good job. <laughs> I don't know if it's level. <laughs> And of course the wires are gonna be in the wall. And in order to get to those wires, how are you gonna be able to retrieve them other than having to cut out the wall, which is made of some kind of concrete material. And you're gonna to have to pull that out and then you're gonna to have to replace it. How are you gonna be able to do that without it looking ridiculous? Especially if you have these walls that look like concrete corduroy going all the way up to try to seal that back up and make it look normal with the rest of the house, it's gonna be nearly impossible. And even though it means seem trivial about the pictures, everybody wants to make a home look like a house. And I know that I would be horrified if I couldn't be able to put up my plaques that I've earned over the years on YouTube. Just like the house I just showed you on Zillow, they never have mentioned how these homes can be financed. No, I don't think it's going to be an issue that comes up, but it could be because it's not a traditional type of home. And just like anything that's new on the market, lenders always have an issue because it's not something that they are used to putting financing on. I mean, will they be able to finance over 30 years or is it something you're going to have to buy at cash because it's such a new product on the market? Only time will tell on that one too. And with that, you're going to have to get homeowner's insurance. Now, I can only imagine when it comes to homeowner's insurance on 3D printed houses, that it would be a lot less expensive than it would be for a traditional home. Being that the house is made from concrete, it is a resistant to weather conditions like hurricanes, tornadoes, and even fire resistant. Because it's made of concrete, if you had a flooding issue, it would dry out very quickly and you wouldn't have to remove drywall, but we still don't know what the insulation is inside, so that could be still an issue. So if you had an insulation inside, you would have to remove that out. Still, this is an issue that's going to have to be addressed by insurance companies in the future if it's gonna be something that they're gonna be selling to the public, to the masses. Another issue that has come up about 3D printed houses is the roof itself. Because even though the slab is put down with concrete, the walls are made with the 3D printed concrete mystery mix, and then the inside is all put together just like a regular house would be, they haven't addressed the roof itself. Now, some companies like the one in Germany have been making these roof slats that they bring in. It's like a piece of concrete they put on top and it's a flat roof. And other 3D companies have been just using a traditional roof. And since you're having this traditional regular roof that you would always have, how is that going to affect insurances now, one company out of Italy has made their own version of 3D printed homes that isn't made of concrete. It's actually made of clay and they're really super interesting and it looks like something that they're going to be pursuing in the future. I don't know how sturdy those are. Only time will tell because it is made out of a dirt 
clay material, but I'm assuming that they're gonna be much like an adobe type of home. I mean, I've been doing it in Tuscany for centuries, so I'm sure they know what they're doing with this particular type of clay. With all these unanswered questions about 3D printed homes, do you believe that they're really going to be the answer to the affordability crisis? Or do you think it's just gonna be another one of those things that we talk about that you remember 3D printed homes in the 2020s? Let me know your opinion in the comments section. I mean, would you consider buying a 3D printed house in the future? I don't know yet, I'm still on the fence about it. To watch some more videos about building and how home builders actually lie to you, go ahead and click this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.